Good evening, everyone. I'm Alexander Kartelich. There have been many powerful relationships throughout history. Lewis and Clark, others. But one stands out amongst the rest. That of the bond between English nobleman Harold Wetherington III and local farmer Uriah Jeffreys. Theirs is a tale of discovery, disobedience, and yes, devotion. It is truly one of history's greatest friendships. Historians theorize that these two men first laid eyes on each other while strolling in Kensington Garden. It must have been friend at first sight because not long after we begin to see letters of affection between the two pals. Dear Uriah, my beautiful companion, it was so lovely glancing at you today from the courtyard. Your eyes sparkled brighter than the most precious of jewels laden in the most radiant of diadems, and your lips luscious as two fuckable pillows. Dear Harold, I can never love a woman the way I love you. I hope that one day, years from now, when someone reads these letters, they'll correctly translate this communication as words between men romantically interested in each other, not platonically, but romantically. I think we should finally meet. The last part of that letter could be translated any type of way. We assume it was a joke between two chums. Finally, Harold and Uriah did meet, and their friendship officially began, the way so many friendships do, in a local alley. God, I want a friend you so fucking bad. Do it, Harold. Friend me all night long. I'm gonna touch you right in the friend zone. Make sweet, hot, platonic love to me, Harold. <laughs> we imagine it went something like that. The men would soon be meeting and catching up on Harold's grounds or reading new releases of literature. It was even written by those closest to them that they were even known to share a friendly peck on the cheek. This was common, by the way. Uh, a peck on the cheek was completely normal for men to do with their fellow athletes, business partners, and grocers. Anyway, their friendship was really starting to soar to new heights. Uriah, I hear tell there are secret places where other best friends such as ourselves like to congregate. Oh, yes, there is, Harold. People who feel ostracized by society who won't accept that there are two such as them who could be as bestest buddies as buddies could be. We must steal ourselves away and find this Eden. Yes! <laughs> While at these gentlemen's clubs, they sipped wine, debated philosophically with other attendees, and even learned some of the new English dance steps of the day. Woo! Yes, Harold and Uriah were as close as two compatriots could be. And they then honored that bond through a rarely seen best friend ceremony, where they exchanged best friend bracelets that happened to be in the form of rings. Uriah even changed his last name to Wetherington, most likely as a friendly rib between comrades. And from then on, Harold was gracious enough to house his friend Uriah in his manor, after both divorcing their wives due to other reasons, and they lived as completely platonic roommates for the rest of their days, culminating in the very thing colleagues are wont to do, being buried next to each other in adjoining plots of land. I hope you enjoyed learning about the lives of Harold and Uriah. I would like to think that they too would enjoy their stories being told truthfully and accurately, as we have done today. It must be accurate, for the very thought of these two men being anything other than friends would explode my tiny brain. Once again, I'm Alexander Kartelich. Good night, and good history. They weren't gay, right? That's not a thing that existed back then. <laughs>